Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Garrett Smith, known as the nutrition detective around these YouTube parts. And what we're going over today is the, some of the basics of vitamin A toxicity and metabolism. How natural or synthetic vitamin A sources, they're all the same, and they all end up as retinoic acid eventually. This is, this is like one of the most important things that we can go over so that people understand what's going on with vitamin A in the body. So here we go. The main purpose of this presentation, purposes, there's two of them. One, we're going to show how all of the vitamin A that comes in your body, whether it's from foods or supplements or skin creams or anything else, however it's getting in your body, it has to turn into retinoic acids for your body to if you believe vitamin A is a, an essential nutrient, which it's not, but if you believe that it's usable, it has to turn to these retinoic acids because that's what scientists call active vitamin A. And that's what supposedly activates the retinoic acid receptors or the retinoid X receptors. It does that, but it doesn't end well. Um, because, so what I'm saying is that part of detoxing these non-nutrient poisons called vitamin A, carotenoids, and retinoids, we have to turn them into retinoic acids. And this is what causes the problems of vitamin A toxicity. And many people are familiar with these problems of vitamin A toxicity when they've heard about retinoic acids like Accutane and Retin-A. So this is part of the body's natural process of detoxifying them. The problem is, is retinoic acid is more toxic than just about all of the other vitamin A forms. And this is what science says is the active form. So it's really complicated and you got to know what's going on. That's what we're going to do here today. Number two, I'm going to show based on research, how there's no difference in the toxicity caused between natural sources of vitamin A and synthetic sources of vitamin A. And I have a couple of studies that directly state this. So anybody who wants to incorrectly argue or claim that supposedly natural vitamin A is so much safer and you can't overdose on it. And it's only supplements and pharmaceuticals that you can overdose on vitamin A on. They are quite simply wrong. There is no chemical difference. You can talk to a chemist. They're not different. They are the same thing. Chemists couldn't tell you the difference between a natural retinoid and, an and a synthetic retinoid in the body. They can't tell you the difference. So they're the same. So let's go on with those purposes in mind here. So what do I mean? We're going to set the groundwork. What do I mean when I say vitamin A? And I abbreviate it as VA in these presentations. I mean, basically all carotenoids and retinoids together. It's, that's how we group them. Carotenoids are the plant vitamin A, if you want to call it that. They are plant pigments responsible for bright reds, yellows, and orange hues in many fruits and vegetables. Funny thing is, is in nature, whether it's in animals or plants, bright colors are often used to mark poison. Poisonous animals, poisonous plants mark themselves with bright colors. Interesting that I'm saying carotenoids are poisonous, isn't it? The most common and familiar carotenoid is beta carotene. Other common carotenoids in foods include alpha carotene, beta cryptoxanthin, lycopene, lutein, astaxanthin, and zeaxanthin. Those last ones with the IN at the end, the lutein, astaxanthin, and zeaxanthin are what are called xanthophils, and those are oxygenated carotenoids. They're a bit different than the pro-vitamin A carotenoids, which we're going into now. Pro-vitamin A carotenoids, these are alpha carotene, beta carotene, and beta cryptoxanthin. Why do we call them pro-vitamin A carotenoids? Because the human body can cut or cleave, especially beta carotene, into one pro-vitamin A carotenoid, one beta carotene can be cut into two retinaldehydes, not retinol, as everybody likes to say. It cuts it into retinaldehydes, and we'll get into that more on the uh, next couple slides. So we, we went over carotenoids. What are retinoids? Retinoids are the class of chemical compounds that are all functionally related to vitamin A. How are they functionally related to vitamin A? because they all have to turn into retinoic acid, which is where science says the activity is. That's how they're all chemically functionally related. And we'll show you that on the, on the metabolism pathway in a second. The most common retinoids include, we have retinol, which is the alcohol form of vitamin A. Did you know vitamin A is chemically classed as an 
alcohol, retinol. Retinaldehyde, the aldehyde form of vitamin A, they, they like to confuse us in the literature on vitamin A by calling retinaldehyde retinal. And then people assume that it's directly related to the retina. Retinol related to the retina. Retinal is retinaldehyde. And certain studies show that when you accumulate too much retinaldehyde, it causes eye disease. So interesting that science likes to say that you need vitamin A for your eyes. And yet if you get too much retinaldehyde in your eyes, it ruins your eyes. It can't be both folks. You can't need it and yet have it be this super toxic thing. Then we have retinoic acid, which is the acid form, also called active vitamin A by, by the researchers who believe that this is a necessary thing. You may not know that active vitamin A is actually retinoic acid because everybody talks about retinol and retinaldehyde, even though they don't realize they're talking about retinaldehyde. They talk about retinol when that's not supposedly the active stuff, it's retinoic acid. And we'll get into why the supposed active stuff is actually the poisonous, the most poisonous stuff in just a second. Retinyl esters. This is the esterified storage form. This is what is found in animal products. Everybody likes to talk about how retinol is the animal form of vitamin A. When in all actuality, if you look it up, if you are consuming liver or you're consuming dairy or you're consuming eggs, what is mostly in those is not retinol. It's retinol esters. So if most people don't even know that the active form of vitamin A is retinoic acid, that beta carotene breaks up into two retinaldehydes and not retinols, and that the animal form of vitamin A that's in foods is almost all retinol esters and not retinol. How wrong do you think people are on all the rest of the vitamin A stuff out there? <laughs> They're terribly wrong. So let's move on. This is the basic metabolism slash detox pathway of vitamin A. This is how your body gets rid of vitamin A because it doesn't want it because vitamin A toxicity is a very real thing in the literature. I have another video that talks about just how much vitamin A toxicity is going on in the world right now. In America, it's at least one third of the people, one out of every three people. And in, in past studies in let's say Ghana in 1960, they were seeing more than 50% um, vitamin A toxicity by liver biopsy in cadavers. More than 50%. This is a real problem, folks. So retinyl esters starts at the top. That is the storage form. Esterase is a reversible enzyme. That's what those two arrows means. It means it can go back and forth if it needs to. Retinol is the alcohol form. Goes through alcohol dehydrogenase. Again, another reversible enzyme. That turns it into retinaldehyde or retinal. I love the retinal. It's just to hide that it's an aldehyde because most people who know anything about chemistry know that aldehydes are generally bad for us, okay? And then retinaldehyde can go through aldehyde dehydrogenase, ALDH, supremely important enzyme in this whole process, but that's only a one-way enzyme. That goes to retinoic acid and there's no going back. I talk about this in my detox program, which I'll show you the link at the end of this program, but knowing about retinaldehyde to retinoic acid and how to manage this is supremely important and most people have no idea of what to do here and this is what I specialize in because this is managing this whole vitamin A detox process. Then over on that left side you see the pro-vitamin A carotenoids. Carotenoids come into the system, they can be chopped into two pieces and that becomes two, one beta carotene becomes two retinaldehydes. And then retinaldehyde can either go backwards, turn into retinol, or retinyl esters to be stored in the liver or the body fat, or it can go down through retinoic acid. This is how it all works. Knowing how to manipulate this process is the key to making yourself feel better or feel worse, and to getting through this process for those of you who are doing vitamin A detox as quickly as possible. And if you don't know how to manage this process, you may be making yourself feel a lot worse than you need to. Key concept here, all vitamin A originates in carotenoids, all of it. Everything that people are talking about with retinol, 
it all originated in carotenoids. This is super important to understand. Carotenoids are created by plants as a defense system. Plants do chemical warfare because they can't move. They are, their only defense is to make poisons. They're very good at it. They've been good at it for a long time. Just because a plant, don't think that plants are out there trying to uh, help you to eat them. They're out there trying to do their own thing and reproduce because that's what they're designed to do. Just because something's in a plant food doesn't mean it's good for you. People love to use that excuse for uh, vitamin A. That it, it wouldn't be there if it wasn't meant to be eaten. And I could say, well, there's all sorts of other compounds that are in plants that aren't meant to be eaten. Caffeine in coffee and tea is, meant, is used by plants as a pesticide. Nicotine can be used as you can concentrate nicotine and spray it on plants and it's a pesticide. Plants make those things. That doesn't mean they're good for you, okay? So carotenoids are the beginning of the vitamin A system, if you will. We, if we eat carotenoids, they go into us, we can then chop them up and we can either store them, we can store carotenoids. Of course we can store carotenoids. This is how people turn yellow or orange when they eat too many of them. They start, they go on their carrot juice diet and they turn orange. They're storing it. It doesn't get any more obvious than that, that we can store carotenoids in our skin and our subcutaneous body fat. I saw a quote from a uh, plastic surgeon the other day who said that when he does the liposuction and he pulls out the fat, he can tell people who eat tons of plant foods because their fat is orange. So absolutely we can store carotenoids. That's what we do when we don't have enough space in the liver to turn them into retinoids. Again, this is going back to the pathway that is kind of what I specialize in. Animals, such as cattle or fish, eat the carotenoids. Some, some of it gets stuck in their tissue. You've seen salmon. Salmon is that color because of carotenoids, astaxanthin, a lot of it. Animals can then break down the, the carotenoids that are pro-vitamin A retinoids. They can cut those carotenoids up into retinaldehyde. So they're, they're doing the same process that we are. See how it all starts in carotenoids. Whether we cut it into retinoids or whether the animals do it for us, it's all the same thing. We can eat those retinoids from the animals through meat, muscle meat, liver, eggs, or milk, dairy. There's no animal retinoids without the plant carotenoid foundation. And an important thing to know is I have a paper, I believe it's from 2013, where they specifically said that carotenoids are not an essential nutrient. We have no known essential need for them in our diet. We don't have to have them. Now, how can that be true if all vitamin A in the system comes from carotenoids? It came originating from carotenoids. If carotenoids are not an essential nutrient, then how can you say that the things that carotenoids are turned into are an essential nutrient? It doesn't, it doesn't work that way. Next, just the importance of this cannot be understated. Now we're getting into the, the meat of this presentation. We are going to go over how humans break down food carotenoids into exactly the same retinoic acids that are in pharmaceutical retinoic acid drugs. Crazy, right? First paper. And these hyperlinks are legit. You can go and we, I'm going to put this Google slideshow in, um, in the notes so you can click on it and you can go find the studies on PubMed or when I have the full paper, or I do the full paper, you can go and look at it. Confirm that I'm not making stuff up here. So the first paper, modulation of plasma all trans retinoic acid concentrations by the consumption of carotenoid rich vegetables. People like to say that we can't convert carotenoids into retinoids enough or quick enough. Let's read that title again. Modulation changing of plasma all trans retinoic acid concentrations by the consumption of carotenoid rich vegetables. Okay, the quote, our study clearly shows that consumption of vegetables rich in beta carotene positively influences human atroplasma levels. They're saying that eating vegetables increases the all trans retinoic acid levels in your blood. Now, if science wants to say that, that 
retinoic acid is the active form, then you have to convert the carotenoids into retinoids, which then can eventually become the form of retinoic acid. You have to. Now, what do they call all transretinoic acid in pharmaceutical drugs? It's called tretinoin. It's also called retin-A. Interesting thing was there was a study on veterans, the terrible things we do to veterans in this country, my goodness. It was a VA study and they gave them topical retin-A for their face trying to prevent cancer. And they had to stop the study early because too many of them were dying early. That's a nice study to be in, right? They were trying to prevent cancer supposedly and they ended up killing more of them than they should, than should have died during that study period. All transretinoic acid, you make it from vegetables. When it was given in, in topical form in a study, killed guys more than should have died anyway. This is serious. Next paper, 13 cis retinoic acid is an endogenous compound in human serum. Let me repeat that title. 13 cis retinoic acid is an endogenous compound in human serum. Endogenous means we have created that molecule in our system. Endogenous means from within. It doesn't mean we're like making it out of thin air here. It means we are taking, we are turning retinoids, retinyl esters to retinol to retinaldehyde to retinoic acids. We are turning them into that inside our body. So we're making it processing it, creating it inside our body. Okay. So they're saying this 13 cis retinoic acid is normally found in human serum, in your blood. Normally. Here's the quote. The presence of 13 cis retinoic acid as the predominant form of retinoic acid in human urine under normal physiological conditions recently has been reported. Next part of this quote after a meal the concentration of total retinoic acids was 36 percent greater compared to fasting subjects this indicates that the level of retinoic acid in human serum is influenced by dietary intake so first let's let me tell you what 13 cis retinoic acid is 13 cis retinoic acid if they gave it to you in a pill would be called accutane or isotretinoin so what they're saying, 13 cis retinoic acid or isotretinoin, aka Accutane, is created within us. The title of this is saying it's created within us and it's in our blood. In people who are not taking Accutane. Okay, they're saying it's the same stuff as Accutane. It is the main form of retino. Accutane, isotretinoin is the main form of retinoic acid in human urine under normal conditions. People are not taking Accutane. We're making Accutane in our blood and we're peeing it out. After a meal, the retinoic acids in the blood went up by one third. So we are quickly converting these carotenoids and retinoids into retinoic acids. The level of retinoic acid in human serum is influenced by dietary intake. Okay, last one. So that's two food ones, normal meal and vegetables, both raising retin-A levels in your blood and Accutane levels in your blood. Now we go to the last paper, circulating endogenous retinoic acid concentrations among participants enrolled in a randomized placebo-controlled clinical trial of retinyl palmitate. So this is a supplement of retinyl palmitate. Retinyl palmitate is a retinyl ester, the storage form. It's a very common, it's very common in supplements in your multis. If you're taking vitamin A supplements, this is the type of vitamin A that's in cod liver oil. This is the type that's in liver if you eat it. This is the main one. Retinyl palmitate is the main retinyl ester that's out there. Okay. Endogenous again means within our body. We are making these retinoic acids within our body. So here we go. The quote, this study suggests that supplementation with retinyl palmitate is an effective means to increase circulating all trans, nine cis, and 13 cis retinoic acid concentrations among humans. 
do you think that they can go and differentiate between vegetable retinoic acid increases of isotretinoin or of tretinoin in your blood versus the ones that are made from supplements versus the ones where you take a pill of Accutane or Retin-A and it raises your levels. They can't tell the difference between these folks. That means if you know the side effects of Accutane or Retin-A, you can get the same side effects from eating a lot of vitamin A. So we have foods raising your retinoic acid levels and we have supplements raising your retinoic acid levels. Of course, if you take the pharmaceuticals of these versions, it's going to raise your retinoic acid levels and you have very little protection against that retinoic acid. You have no defensive mechanism. You can't store retinoic acid again, like you can with retinol and retinaldehyde. You can't store it in your liver as a way to protect yourself. So retinoic acid in your system, the reason it's so damaging with pharmaceuticals is because you're just taking straight retinoic acid and you have no defense against it other than getting rid of it. It just floats around until you get rid of it and causes all the havoc, okay? Now, we're gonna cover how food and supplement vitamin A is the same thing in terms of toxicity problems. First, from a study that showed total vitamin A intakes barely above the RDA, the recommended daily allowance it decreased bone mineral density, AKA increased bone loss. So let's discuss something here. Osteoporosis is said to be a growing worldwide problem. The RDA is the recommended amount. So recommended amount, typically most people think of that with their, um, with their vitamins and stuff like that as this is the amount I want to get or more. Right? People tend to, with vitamins, people tend to think of this is the minimum suggested. And if I get more than that, then that's just great. So this study showed barely above the RDA, decreased bone mineral density, increased osteoporosis. I can tell you that health nut people, these, these organ meat, like liver eaters, and the people who are eating tons of eggs, and the people who are doing tons of dairy, whether it's raw or not. People who are eating the rainbow, they are getting way, way over the RDA. And then you wonder why osteoporosis is such a problem. So let's get into this. The study is retinol intake and bone mineral density in the elderly. The Rancho Bernardo study. Quote, however, among supplement users, Retinol from dietary and supplement sources had similar associations with bone mineral density, suggesting total intake is more important than source. Let me just repeat that last time. Total intake is more important than source. They're saying they're the same thing in terms of the total effect on the body. Now, I believe it was the, the big Swedish Scandinavian studies that showed that, I think they were Swedish, they might've been Norwegian, um, but it was a Scandinavian study showing that bone density went down as vitamin A went up. They're talking femoral density, they're talking actual fractures. It's a big deal in, uh, in this, these Scandinavian studies. And then they did this in the US in Rancho Bernardo, California, and they found the same thing. If you, what vitamin A does is it goes and it directly pulls calcium out of your bones. That's what it does. So if you would like to avoid osteoporosis, you better get below the RDA. If you want to know what the teratology, the birth defect prevention society says for pregnant women, they say that pregnant women should get even less vitamin A than a normal person because of birth defect risks from retinoic acid. Okay. Here's the key takeaway from this slide. There was no significant difference in effect between the food and supplement, food and supplement vitamin A sources. No significant difference. They had to, and people say, well, but that's supplement users. Well, they had to have supplement users to make the comparison, right? Moving on. 
This is the best one. People will say, oh, well, I take cod liver oil and it has vitamin D to protect me from the vitamin A. And it's, I'm going to be all fine because it's natural and, and stuff. Okay. Food versus supplement vitamin A. Again, they're the same. The paper is the effect of hypervitaminosis A on blood coagulation in the rat. Hypervitaminosis A means they were giving them vitamin A toxicity. These two are technically almost synonymous. Okay, hypervitaminosis A is where technically they see high, high vitamin A in the blood, whereas vitamin A toxicity is where there's actually vitamin A toxicity symptoms occurring. Now, I can tell you, and this is in the literature, Vitamin A toxicity symptoms can happen when blood values are in the normal range. And if those of you who know anything about normal ranges for blood tests, they're basically garbage. They are. So here's the quote. Rats fed vitamin A in doses of 40,000 units, international units I use a day develop a coagulation defect after about 10 days. The same result is produced by synthetic vitamin A as by naturally occurring vitamin A in a fish oil concentrate, end quote. Let me repeat that for the cod liver oil users. And remember, cod liver oil users, you should go and watch the other video on this channel about cod liver oil and all the negative research on that that I've got before you put that into your children. Don't ruin your children's lives with that, please. It will not help them. They don't want to take it because intuitively, instinctively, they know it's not good for them. Don't force it down them. Why do you think kids avoid vegetables? Because they don't want the vitamin A. They can taste it and their intuition says, don't eat this. Okay. Anyway, fish oil concentrate. What would that be? That would be cod liver oil. Fish oil concentrate. It could be fish. It could be oil derived from their muscle meat. You know, salmon is a fatty fish. There's vitamin A in the, in the meat of salmon. It could be cod liver oil. It could be, you know, people are taking shark liver oil now and they're taking like ray or like, I don't know, not manta ray oil, but they're taking other skate, skate oil. It's all full of vitamin A. Then you should go and read about the toxicity that people get. There's another video on this channel about the toxicity that people get from eating liver of all kinds, polar bear, um, fish, uh, wolves, uh, sled dogs, sorry, sled dogs. Um, of course, there's cow liver. I have, I have studies showing people getting vitamin A toxicity that same day from all sorts of fish liver. So, People who want to say that cod liver oil or fish liver oil is somehow more protective than this doesn't hurt you as bad. It can't be as bad as synthetic vitamin A. Here's the paper. The same result is produced by synthetic vitamin A as by naturally occurring vitamin A in a fish oil concentrate. I don't really need to say anymore. And then the people who will insist that natural food vitamin A is different than synthetic. I mean, I really kind of blew that out of the water with those two papers. If people want to try to present a study comparing the two that says one of the exact same form of vitamin A, that one is somehow less toxic than the other, I want to know about it. Send it to me. You can find me through my website, nutritionrestored.com, and you can send it to my office manager who answers the email. What people are doing with this whole natural is better than synthetic automatically is they're doing the appeal to nature fallacy. The appeal to nature fallacy. Well, what's a fallacy? A fallacy is faulty reasoning, bad logic. Is that the, what the appeal to nature fallacy is, is that something is good because it's natural or something is bad because simply because it's unnatural. This is not, a lot of times this is true. It's not always true. So what do we have from what we presented earlier? Food vitamin A turns into retinoic acids. This is known, I showed you the papers. We wouldn't be able to, scientists wouldn't be able to say that the active vitamin A was doing anything until it turns into retinoic acid. It has to get there. The weird thing is that they don't tell you is that 
13 cis retinoic acid and all trans retinoic acid are Accutane and Retin-A, the exact same chemical compounds. So we now have two studies showing that total food or supplement vitamin A consumed, not the source, synthetic or natural, determine the negative effects. We've shown that food vitamin A turns into the same stuff eventually as supplement vitamin A and pharmaceutical vitamin A. This I can show you that the appeal to nature fallacy in this case doesn't work in the research. You can't say they're different. Show me research that they're different because they're not. So what does all this mean exactly? So what do we have? We have all vitamin A in plant or animal foods originates in carotenoids. It means plant vitamin A is eventually just as bad for you as animal vitamin A. It just takes a bit longer to cause the same problems. When your body, people will say, oh, well, you don't convert carotenoids into retinoids fast enough. Part of that's because your body will store carotenoids in the skin. This is why people turn yellow or orange. Interesting thing for those of you out there who are very tired, I have a paper showing one of the places we stored tons of our carotenoids was in our adrenals. Maybe you've heard of adrenal fatigue. Gosh, I wonder what's causing that. So if you were storing these carotenoids in other tissues and turning, you know, you don't have to turn yellow or orange to have it in your skin. I've gotten people to go from orange to not orange. And what's going on is your body will eventually take all of those carotenoids out of the skin. It will convert them into retinyl esters. I have a paper on that. And then send them down to the liver for either storage or processing. So all those carotenoids are going to be turned into retinoic acid at some point. It may just not be right away. So people who are saying, well, we don't convert them very quickly. Your body doesn't get rid of them. It puts them places because it has to run them through the liver. Now, the funny thing is, is when we start getting people detoxing vitamin A and they're doing things correctly, we will start to see their bowel movements turn yellowish or orange. They're actually pooping out vitamin A. We've even started to see vitamin A signs in the urine in terms of a heavier part of the urine that is yellow. There's, there's almost two layers to the urine now where the bottom layer is a darker yellow and the top layer is a, a lighter color. We're seeing it come out of people. This is what we've come to now. We can actually see it come out of people. And just one other note, I do believe that those underarm stains that some people get where it turns yellow, I'm suspecting that that may be vitamin A too. So anyway, we've shown that there's no difference in chemical structure or metabolism between natural and synthetic forms of vitamin A. It means that vitamin A from foods is just as toxic as vitamin A from supplements and pharmaceuticals. They just get their at different times, it just takes them um, different amounts of time to eventually get there. So one can seem to be delayed. What this really means at the end of the day is that every single negative effect known from retinoic acid drugs like Accutane and retin -A can completely be induced by food vitamin A because it all turns into the same retinoic acids. So if you wanna go and look up side effects, Accutane, side effects, Retin-A, and see if your symptoms show up on those lists. It doesn't have to be all the list. Vitamin A affects different people differently because all of us have different weak links. Everybody likes to talk about genetic testing these days, and they go, well, I have this genetic link and this genetic link. And then the same thing happens with vitamin A. The weak link is where the first problems show up for you. And that is also influenced by your diet. And that's why I do my nutritional restoration where we test, we don't guess, we look at the minerals and we get those minerals right. And we do work on some vitamins, but the main area we focus on is the minerals. And so by getting the, the nutrient deficiencies corrected and getting the toxicity out, we start to see the body is able to heal itself. So that's the the guts of the presentation. If you want more information on how to fix your vitamin A toxicity, maybe you've 
realize you have vitamin A toxicity, or maybe you're coming here because somebody turned you on to my work and you're wondering, what do I do now? My website where the, you can purchase the nutritional restoration, the, the testing packages, hair testing, blood testing, I do a combination of both because one or the other is not sufficient. We, we want to have both angles on it. Um, that's nutritionrestored.com. Other videos from me, if you want to see them, like I mentioned, the, the liver causing toxicity problems, the cod liver oil causing toxicity problems, all sorts of other stuff is on my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash nutrition restored. You can also find my backup videos on BitChute, which is um, my channel is nutrition restored with no space. And that link is there. Facebook, facebook.com slash doctor as teacher. There I put on, I put up posts on vitamin A fairly regularly there. And um, then I have my, the most important thing here is the vitamin A toxicity and detoxification network. This is a private social network where I have the, the deep, when you join, it is paid. When you join, you get access to the vitamin A detox program in the courses section of the network. And that's where I tell you what to do. I mean, it, it, it's a do it yourself program. Then if people want to work with me doing the testing, if you purchase any of the test packages, where it includes a consult and either the hair testing and the blood testing for, for international people, I can only do hair testing for you, the blood testing you gotta get on your own, but uh, you get the detox program access as part of any package that you get with me. Or you can buy it on its own if you're a do-it-yourselfer. So. That's all I have for today. Again, remember, vitamin A is the same whether it's in supplement form or food form or pharmaceutical form. It all just ends up in the same places, causing the same damage. And there is no proven difference between vitamin A supplements and um, food. It all ends up as retinoic acid. That's the big thing to know from this. So hope you all enjoyed it. I will see you later. Have a great day. Bye.